Visit AwakeningMusicBooks.com for avant-garde artists, eclectic world music, consciousness written radio and blogs, self-help, healing, and wellness services. That's AwakeningMusicBooks.com. Hello, welcome to the Natural Grocer Radio Show. I am your host, Kenyatta Turner, and I'm here with my co-host, Safir Madi. Welcome, Safir. Hey, how you doing? I'm fantastic. Thanks for being here. Thank Safir you. is a shaman and owner of New Day Healing, and we are going to have some fun today. Our topic is what is qigong and how can it boost your immune system we're going to be discussing the benefits of qigong which is a traditional chinese medicine healing practice that supports mental physical and spiritual health through gentle movement meditation and breathing techniques now we have a very special guest on our call yes, we today do. yes we're so glad yeah. that he is here we've got dr george xavier love we're going to bring him on in just a moment but let me tell you a little bit about him he is a licensed acupuncture physician dr of oriental medicine medical qigong master and herbalist through qigong and other healing insights dr love will explain how emotional stress causes muscular tension that restricts blood flow and oxygen that can starve the organs and lead to pain and sickness are you there dr love that sounds a like a perfectly succinct (laughs) definite Okay. very much <laughs> all right fantastic thank you you are here and so anyone listening out there hey if you want more information regarding dr love and his healing practice you can go to www.lovechinesemedicine.com his phone number is 561-502-6200 and he is located in beautiful boca raton florida mm-hmm. now remember everyone before we get started here this show is for you the listening audience. So please feel free to give us a call at 602-324-1510 with any questions or comments you might have, or you can send us a message through our Facebook live show. So let's get to it. So again, we're talking about what is Qigong and how can it boost your immune system? Dr. Love, my first question to you is why is it important for the listeners to pay real close attention to this particular topic? Well, number one, the current pandemic does not address how to build your immune system. It only addresses how to treat it after you've lost your immune mm-hmm. system. So mm-hmm. the the logic of building your immune system is never addressed. So that's the number one reason. Um, when the quarantine happened 18 months ago, I had a very small uh, number of students. I had maybe 16 students, Mm -hmm. and that tripled, quadrupled, quintupled (laughs) with people wanting to find out how can I build my immune system. Necessity is the mother of invention, right? (laughs) Necessity is the mother of invention, absolutely. (laughs) So we all know that the immune system is actually in the brain but it works through the lymphatic system. So Mm -hmm. if you are not moving, walking, jumping, climbing, dancing, swimming, then you are not pumping your Mm -hmm. lymphatic system. Mm -hmm. You're not producing Mm -hmm. particular uh, white blood cells that eat bacteria, virus, fungus, and parasites. So no matter how many vitamins and herbs you take, you still need to do that. You still got to move. Still got to move. And breathe, and breathe. And three. Okay. So well, the number one issue, obviously, is your lungs. But we don't know that the diaphragm is the thing that pushes the air out of the lungs. And the diaphragm also regulates the blood pressure. So mm-hmm. breathing not only increases the amount of blood going into the lungs, but it also increases the amount of blood going into the heart. Mm-hmm. So that so, diaphragm is very, very important. So, doc, so Dr. Love, this is, this is definitely yes. important why the listeners should be listening for this particular topic today. So my next question to you is why should they be listening to you about this topic? Tell us a little bit about, about yourself and why we should listen to you. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't know where to start. <laughs> well, well, I, I've well, only been doing well, this for 40 years. Okay, yeah, right. there you go. All right, everyone write that down. 40 years. That's the first good reason to listen. Chikung, like, ma- Chikung master. For 40 years. Okay. Yeah, okay. Um, 
How did you get into Qigong? Qigong. How did you um, get into it? Okay, so I read this magazine article about a woman named Guo Lin who had a particularly virulent form of uterine cancer. And they sent her home from the hospital, and they said, you're going to be dead in 90 days. So, mm. you know, make make your peace. Wow. And so she went home. She's cleaning up the garage. She found some papers that her grandfather had, some notes that her grandfather had written. So she decided she was going to follow these exercises. 90 days later, she goes back to the hospital, and she says, you told me I was going to be dead. <laughs> and I'm still alive. <laughs> And they said, what did you do? So she showed them these exercises, and they converted the hospital into a Qigong hospital. Oh, wow. Mm. And now there are 10 Qigong hospitals in China. Wow. What does so Qigong mean? It, What's the translation, literally? It's vitality exercise. Ah. Uh, <laughs> makes sense. <Okay. laughs> <laughs> vitality exercise. Okay. She, she is vitality and gong is exercise. Okay. Oh. So they're vitality exercises. Excellent. So we do things backwards in the United States. Uh, we go to the gym. We work out. We sweat. An hour and a half, two hours. We come out of the gym. We're tired. We're exhausted. <laughs> you work out with me 90 minutes. You leave energized, mm. pumped up, excited, joyful. We want to definitely touch on the reason why, yeah. uh, but we're going to be uh, going to commercial soon. And uh, But before we do that, um, can you uh, also, when we come back, touch on um, the balance of mind, body, and spirit with using Qigong? Absolutely. Well, I think that the, so, list, the listeners are going to have a lot to to take some notes on. So I'm going to let them know right now. When we come back. It's <laughs> going to be smoking. It's going to be smoking because we're just <laughs> we're just getting started. If you have if you've been listening so far, you probably already realized uh, that there's some things that you may want to be paying very close attention to. And we'll be right back in a few moments with today's main topic. We are speaking about what is qigong and how can it boost your immune system. And so when we come back, be prepared with some notes. We're going to have Dr. Love fill us in. Forty years wow. he's been teaching this he don't look that old <laughs> no he doesn't we have him on zoom right now so <laughs> all the way from boca raton you're listening to the natural grocer radio show on money radio 1510 we'll be back in a few moments and now back to the natural grocer radio show where health is your greatest wealth live on money radio 1510 and 105.3 fm Welcome back to the Natural Grocer Radio Show. I'm your host, Kenyatta, and I am here with my co-host, Safir. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. We are speaking with Dr. George Love, Qigong Master, Doctor of Oriental Medicine, Acupuncturist, and Herbalist. And before the break, we were talking about Qigong and how yeah. you get energized after that versus yeah, feeling how come tired. I come out the <laughs> gym all sweaty and tired? Yeah. And how come uh, I don't feel that way when I come out of your class, Dr. Love? Yeah, let's talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> I want to sweat, man. <laughs> Come on. You want to sweat till you bleed. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> no, not that much. Not, come on now. Bring it in. Bring it in. <laughs> no blood. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right. So what's the deal? What's the scoop? Okay. So Chinese medicine and Qigong are based on what we call the three treasures. Jing, Qi, and Shen. Jing is where the hormones are produced from your diet. Qi is the circulatory system mixed with the pulmonary system. And Shen is the neuroendocrine mixed with the musculoskeletal system. So we simplify that by calling it the neuromuscular system. Mm -hmm. okay. So... There's a set of exercises that are specific to the Jing. There's a set of specific exercises for the Qi and another set of specific exercises for the Shen. So you would call it mind for the Shen, mm -hmm. body for the Qi, and spirit for the Jing. Okay. Oh, okay. The Jing is cool. the essence. So it's working all three mind, body, spirit simultaneously while you're doing the practice. Exactly. That's why you come out energized versus exhausted. 
Exactly. Makes sense exactly. to me. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So what's the difference now, between between that and, let's say, you know, a lot of people don't know what Qigong is. They've never heard of it. Mm-hmm. Most people know about yoga and they know about Tai Chi, mm-hmm. you know. So what's the main factors that distinguish Qigong from the other yeah. practices that are I just mentioned? Okay. Especially so Tai Chi I'm interested about. and Tai Chi are Qigong. Mm. Okay. Okay. See, Explain, please. An, yeah. So, so Qigong <laughs> is, a, is an umbrella that includes all the yogic exercises. Ah, okay. And the Tai Chi and the martial arts, all that is Qigong. Now, I specialize in medical. There is martial, medical, and spiritual. Mm. So, mm-hmm. as the grandmaster of the Blue Dragon system, I am a master in all three, the martial, the medical, and the spiritual. Okay, so, so I, you can hurt somebody if you want to. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> Easily. <laughs> well, well, I have a question. So you said there's martial medical and spiritual so would tai chi be in the martial tai chi initially is a martial art it's Mm -hmm. called supreme ultimate fist okay now it's practiced slowly but it's executed rapidly Mm. and there's something called combat tai chi Mm -hmm. as opposed to health tai chi Got it. Mm-hmm. So you, everything is dependent upon your intention. So right. you can do the same exercises in a very slow moving manner, or you could do the same exercise in a harsh, uh, choppy manner, mm. and that, you're going to get a sense. different result. That makes sense. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> hmm. Very good. So, I'm um, sh- what what preceded. What came first, the chicken or the egg, you know? <laughs> so was it Tai Chi first uh, or Qigong first or yoga first, chronologically speaking? Okay, so chronologically speaking, in the 6th century A.D., there was called the Shaolin, uh, the little temple in the forest. And Bodhidharma was an Indian monk who was charged with setting up these uh, little Buddhist monasteries in China. So he goes to visit um, the little temple in the forest, and he notices the monks are very sick and weakly. Mm. So he develops 18 Buddha palm exercises in order to strengthen the monks. Mm. So he spent eight years training the monks how to develop their strength. And Mm -hmm. then fast forward 150 years, the sixth patriarch Mm -hmm. of the Shaolin Temple then codified it, wrote it down in a book, and then that became the standard of what we call Shaolin martial arts. Mm -hmm. Shaolin is actually Buddhist. It's not martial. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the emperor of China called upon the Shaolin to help him keep his cousin. Keep his cousin. Did we just lose him? Did no. we lose the connection? <laughs> oh, no. We oh, can't. that was such a good story. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, listeners. That's, so that's a great story. So that's a great story. So hold that hold that thought, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so he was he was ending with and we're gonna get him back on the line. Yeah. You sure. know, technology Shortly. things happen. You guys are all here in the inner inner interwebs in the world. You know how it works. He'll be on in just a second. But he's he stopped with the Shaolin uh Something about somebody's cousin. And I just started thinking, ooh, the family's getting involved. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, similar um you know, I do a, a something that, that I created as a shaman called spirit dance. Mm, that's right. And there's a very lot of slimmer, similarities between Tai Chi, yoga, okay. uh, you know, a Qigong mm-hmm. and spirit dance. But the, the element that we add to it is blindfolds. 
You told me about that. Yeah. Tell us more about <laughs> that. That sounds so yeah, interesting. Get, get to, you get to dance blindfolded to tribal music. That's cool. African, Native American, Middle Eastern, Latin. And uh, it works the mind, body, and spirit simultaneous right. like Qigong. Right. Uh, but it's a little bit different. But it's not, you know, you're not uh, required to do certain movements. You just create your own do movement. Do your own movements, blindfolded. Yeah, yeah blindfolded. So, so when when are you doing another one of those? <laughs> uh, whenever you want. Okay. <laughs> we need to put that on the calendar <laughs> well, and have that. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to put that out to the listeners and see if we can uh, schedule something like that. But, yeah, it's it's uh, when he was talking about the uh, ancient practices mm -hmm. of the monks, you know, that's very interesting because I always tell people in, in, in healing sessions that you have to go to spirit if you want to heal it. And so that's why it's very important that we have that spiritual aspect and that spiritual connection Absolutely. to the whole process because without that, you're just going through the physical. Well, and, and you think about that when he said like going to the gym, right? If it's not working your mind, your body, and your spirit at the same time, and oftentimes, I guess, depends on people, what people are doing at the gym, but how much do they bring the spirit aspect into their workouts, even with just lifting mm -hmm. or being on a machine or a treadmill? Are you bringing, you know, the mind is obviously involved in that, but are yeah. you affecting the spirit as well? And if not, then exactly. that might lead to the exhaustion. And, exactly. you know, so we, we lost our guests. We're going to get them back in a few moments here. We were talking with Dr. Love regarding what is Qigong and how can it boost your immune system? We've been discussing uh, the chi traditional Chinese medicine healing practice that supports mental, physical, and spiritual health through gentle movement, meditation, breathing exercises, and techniques. And when we come back from our kitchen corner, kitchen corner, yeah, it's going to be coming up in just a few moments. Get ready for the kitchen corner. Hey, with hey, welcome to the kitchen corner. I'm your host, Danielle Del Castillo, and I'm here to share some wisdom about building health starting in the kitchen. I love that we're talking about probiotics today. I love probiotic foods, and probiotics are so important. There are many probiotic supplements on the market, but getting them naturally through food is definitely the best way to go. Why probiotics? They build up the good bacteria in our gut or intestinal system, which allows us to better fight off unwanted bacteria and build up our immune response. One of my favorite probiotic foods is sauerkraut. It's said that there's more probiotics in one serving of sauerkraut than an entire bottle of probiotics. You can find raw probiotic sauerkraut at your nearest health food store or make your own. It's very simple to make. You simply finely chop a cabbage head, massage it in a bowl with plenty of salt for several minutes, and then add it into a clean glass jar, cover it with salt water, put on the lid, and let it sit on your counter for two weeks and enjoy your homemade sauerkraut. That was a very simplified way of putting it, but if you want to make your own, please look up the recipe for exact measurements. If you aren't a sauerkraut lover, let's talk about a sweeter way to enjoy your probiotics with yogurt popsicles. You'll need one cup of plain yogurt, you can use dairy or non-dairy, and two cups of fresh or frozen berries, a half a cup of milk of your choice, and a tablespoon of honey or maple syrup. You're going to blend that on high and pour into popsicle molds or drink as a smoothie. If you don't own popsicle molds, I highly suggest getting some for the summertime, and you can turn anything you want into a popsicle. Lemonade pops, fruit pops, banana, chocolate, the possibilities are endless. Well, I hope that you give one of these recipes a try and get more probiotic-rich foods into your daily routine. That's all for today. I look forward to sharing more recipes with you next week on The Kitchen Corner. Thanks for listening to The Kitchen Corner. We'll be right back after these important messages. Welcome back to the Natural Grocer Radio Show. I am your host, Kenyatta, and I'm here with my co-host, Safir. We've been speaking with Dr. George Love, Qigong master, doctor of oriental medicine, acupuncturist, and herbalist. And prior to the break... You left us hanging. He left us hanging <laughs> with the cliffhanger story about somebody's cousin. <laughs> We'd like to start back right there. So, Dr. Love, are you there? Welcome to the cousin, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. The, the conversation was so hot that the phone overheated. That's what happened, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so tell us about this cousin. We were, we were talking about where Qigong originated from, I believe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, go ahead. So Qigong started with um, a set of health exercises that um, Bodhidharma brought to Shaolin Temple. Mm -hmm. And Shaolin then became the repository of these health practices 
that then became the foundation of martial arts. Got it. So, so one thing led to another, led to another, led to another. Okay, and so they're kind of uh, merged together. Is that what you're saying? They're kind of like interconnected. They they are definitely interconnected. Okay, so now so, so not are, one is before the other or that kind of a thing. It's just kind of an evolutionary process. They co-evolved. Ah, gotcha. Makes sense. They co-evolved. Okay. So that answers that question. So mm -hmm. the the mind body spirit connection started there because of, and then the martial arts came later. That is correct. And that was based on need to defend oneself, I guess. The emperor asked for the Shaolin to send one hundred of his monks against. 3,000 trained soldiers. <laughs> okay. okay. This story's getting good. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 100 wow. against 3,000. 3, Got you. And they were defeated in less than 24 hours. Who was defeated? Wow. The monks. The three thousand three thousand troops were defeated. Okay, we got to clarify that now. Wow. Okay. Yeah, all right. So the 3,000 folks got beat. Exactly. By 100 monks. Shaolin. By 100 monks. Wow. Now, now, was there any particular um, practice that the monks were, were using? I mean, can you be specific about what it was that they were, I mean, they were using martial arts, but any particular styles that you could attribute to that? Oh, I, I can, but you, it wouldn't <laughs> make, make any sense to you. Huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, well, it's well, that's like if you said, uh, how, how did the football team how did the Atlanta Falcons beat the uh, New Orleans Saints? <laughs> there you go. I see. So obviously it was a combination of, of many different things. <laughs> and the coach had a lot to do with it as yeah, well. There you go. <laughs> um, so look, let's move on to the next part of our topic today, which is how does Qigong boost the immune system? Okay. So your immune system works through your lymphatic system. Your lymph system has 1,400 lymphatic drainage points. 1,100 of them are in the abdomen. Mm -hmm. So that means that what you eat and what you drink and how you move and how you sleep affects your immune system. Mm -hmm. yes. So if you are couch potatoes, if you are sedentary, if you are a gamer, uh, <laughs> if you are working on your computer six, eight hours a day, then you are literally shutting down your immune system. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. A lot of people have, have jobs and, and things like that. So you got to get problem. up and move around. Huh? Yeah. Now, in 2010, Western medicine said, Sitting five hours a day is equivalent to smoking a pack of cigarettes. So wow. if you sit at work five hours a day and you sit at home five hours a day, that's like smoking two, two packs, packs of cigarettes, of cigarettes in a day. Right. Wow. All right? Mm. So without the oxygen being purified by the lungs, then the heart can't distribute oxygenated blood. Mm -hmm. which means that the tissue repair mechanism cannot kick in. And every night when you go to sleep, your tissue repair mechanism is supposed to take over and do a maintenance phase. Mm -hmm. But yours doesn't. And the reason being because you've been sitting around all day. <laughs> you've been sitting around all day long. So I, so I have a question for um, pretty from a practical perspective standpoint a lot of people are working from home right now their jobs are requiring it they're in front of their computers doing zoom all the day all day i'm one of them you know i know, yeah, I know I'm, I'm the only I'm one, one of them too right so yeah. what are some things that the listeners that you could share with the listeners a couple of practical um tips something that they can literally just start incorporating today to help break that up for them so that they're not smoking a couple packs of cigarettes a day <laughs> okay number one is called a stand-up desk uh -huh. Okay, good. So I got one of those. Okay, I, I got good. One of those, yeah. Okay. You have a stand up desk. Yes. Number two 
your your monitor should be up on the wall looking up at and, it and your monitor should be higher so that your head is looking up ah as opposed to like a laptop down on your desk you want a monitor that's mm -hmm. up or high level it, Mm -hmm. Now, okay. if you go up and down on your toes, if you if you just go up and down on your toes and bang your heels when you do that, mm -hmm. you send a message for the bone marrow to reproduce itself. Ah. Mm -hmm. Now, the calf it. muscle squeezes the blood back to the heart. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you rock back and forth your heel. Mm. So go up on your toes, bend your knees, rock back on your heel. Up on your toes, bend your knees, rock back on your heels. Okay. That is going to increase blood flow back to your heart. Mm -hmm. Now, if you put your chin to the sky, to the ceiling, mm -hmm. and then, in other words, if you look up and down, you're going to shoot cerebrospinal fluid into the brain, which is going to turn on your immune system. Mm -hmm. Now, they just discovered that the lymph system goes into the brain yeah. in January of 2018. Okay. Now, you would imagine the lymph system goes into the brain. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't go to medical school. You didn't read a medical textbook. You would just assume that that was true. However, the medical textbooks have the immune system, the lymphatic system ending at the jawline. Hmm. And they discovered a lymphocyte in the brain that mm -hmm. they thought previously only lived in the gut. Hmm. Always learning something new. So this is mind-blowing <laughs> information. They yeah. have wow. to rewrite the textbook. Okay. Wow. So doing that simple exercise at your desk, uh, does that also work in the lymphatic system? Because I know I use the rebounder at home uh, to work my lymphatics up and down, like you say, with the heels. Mm -hmm. That is perfect. Mm -hmm. We were we were doing uh, uh, rebounding, <laughs> what, 30 years ago, yeah, right? Yeah, right? <laughs> in South Florida. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So the lymphatics is very, very important. That's key. Could you elaborate the on lymphatic? that, the importance of that lymphatic? Mm -hmm. As a chi? So the thing is, with qigong, you're doing it with pinpoint precision as opposed to random. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, let's suppose... Um, maybe maybe people don't even know what a lymphatic system is and what does, what's the function of the lymphatic, so that might be helpful. That's an that's a even better question. Okay. Yeah. So does anybody know what a Roomba is? <laughs> the Roomba, yeah, do it. A Roomba, what, the little vacuum? The, the dance? Yes, the robotic vacuum. <laughs> the vacuum. Oh, the robotic <laughs> vacuum. Okay. I'm talking about dancing, you know. <laughs> okay, the Roomba, yeah, I do the Roomba. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so the lymphatic system is your robotic vacuum cleaner. Uh, oh. Cleans stuff up. Okay. It moves, so it's it moves constantly, around. Filtering. constantly filtering, constantly filtering, constantly okay. filtering, filtering, filtering. But if you're not moving, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it move. only works when you make it work. And so, what so is it? Fil what still, is it filtering? It doesn't work. What, what is it filtering? Okay, so your body is sixty percent water. We've all we've all heard this before. Right. Your body is sixty percent water. That water is called interstitial fluid. Mm -hmm. okay. So this interstitial fluid gets dirty from undisciplined habits of eating, drinking, poor sleep, caffeine, nicotine, mm -hmm. fried food. <laughs> All the bad things. Fat. Popeyes. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. So the lymphatic system is it's filtering all of that, basically. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. That's an important job. Absolutely. 
<laughs> well, let me let me pause here for a moment because I just want to remind the listeners that uh, what we've been talking about, if you, especially if you just hopped on, we've been talking about qigong and how it can boost your immune system. We've been having a conversation with Dr. George Xavier Love, who's been educating us on all the benefits of qigong. He's doctor of oriental medicine, acupuncturist, and herbalist. We'll be back in a few moments with more on our topic. You're listening to the Natural Grocer Radio Show on Money Radio 1510. We appreciate you and we'll be back in a moment. Welcome back to the Natural Grocer Radio Show. I'm your host, Kenyatta, and I'm here with my co-host, Safir. Hello. 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 <laughs> We've been speaking with Dr. Dr. With Dr. Dr. George Fun's Love. Been that's, that's right. Heating <laughs> up the conversation. He's a Qigong master, doctor of oriental medicine, acupuncturist, and herbalist. And let's jump back into the conversation. Yeah, so, so what about that meditation thing? Absolutely. So we were, we were during the break, we were obviously talking. <laughs> and so, Dr. Love, you know, talk to us a little bit about um, meditation and the uh, art of practicing Qigong. Um, how do they go together if they do at all? Qigong meditation is actually moving meditation. Mm. Ah, moving okay. meditation. The best so kind. So there's walking, there is uh, spinning spiraling, dancing, shaking, shamanic. Uh, there's eight different methods of moving Qigong. But the one thing that I want you to start with, which is a form of meditation, is a teaching tool that I'm going to play for you right now. Hmm. And um, Okay. <laughs> okay. Move your cheek. Shake your hand. Show me what you're working with. Shake your hand. Move your cheek. Shake your hand. Show me what you're working with. Side to side. I like it. I like it. Nice. Side to side. Now drum the sky. Side to side. Yeah. Keep going side to side. Now drum the earth. Side to side. All right. Keep going. Side to side. Now drum the earth. Side to side. Keep going side to side. <laughs> side, side, side to side. side. All right. Keep going side, side to side. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. <laughs> Too bad we lost you. I assume another, you, were, you were dancing. We lost yeah, you on Zoom right then. So we another, didn't get to see Another it. spirit dance going on here. <laughs> <laughs> Got to exactly. put some blindfolds on you, man. <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> hey, I got a quick question uh, uh, on ages. You know, what? what's the uh, recommended age for someone to start at Qigong? And is there any special, you know, uh, physical, you know, uh, requirements necessary to do it? Uh, or a certain kind of shape you gotta be in? That, um, <clears throat> spiritually, they should start at age 40. Really? And um, what because ab what about under kids? the age of 40, oh, okay. your energy is divided. In okay. Householding, money making, hmm. you know. You got, you got a lot you, of baggage. A lot, <laughs> a lot of stuff on your mind. Yeah, right. right. So Qigong is something that you have to dedicate to. And it takes at least two years before you see the benefits, before you can look backwards and see the benefits. Mm. So, Interesting. Um, so you don't have any kids involved? Any, no that teenagers. question comes up all the time. Of However, course. how many children have short attention spans? All of yeah. them? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like all of them. <laughs> right. So that doesn't lend itself well to Qigong, in other words. Right. You have, you have to be mentally focused in order to learn Qigong. Yeah. Aikido is like that, too. You, you can't you have to be a certain age to be able to appreciate Aikido as well because of that spiritual aspect. Exactly. Okay. Well, that's interesting because you see young children in other martial arts mm -hmm. like karate, right? It's you, more physical. It's though. more physical, so it keeps them engaged. Makes sense. Hmm. Mm -hmm. so, so there's what we call internal and external. So the external is the muscular strength and a lot of repetitious movements, uh, mm -hmm. joint rotation exercises. Anybody can do those mm -hmm. at any age. 
Mm-hmm. But when we talk about the internal, when we talk about uh, uh, mental focus, breathing, meditation, slowing the heart rate, slowing the respiration rate, relaxing the muscles, slowing the brain waves, there's a lot going on there. Mm-hmm. And that's why you need an instructor. Right, so these are this is Chagong is for people just, my age, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Makes sense. One instructor, like you said, can help you guide guide you through those, you know, as well. And I still think there's there's could be value for, for children if there's the if if put in the right position to help start teaching them about mindfulness and breathing and things like that. Even if they are running around, that's probably a great thing depends to sit on the them chi- down. Yeah, it depends on the child, I guess, yeah, too. Yeah, absolutely. So, thank you uh, so much. This is so fantastic. Um, Dr. Love, we appreciate you being here. This has been a great conversation. We're not done just yet uh, with the show, everyone. We've been speaking about Qigong and how it can help boost your immune system. And in a few moments, we'll be back, though, but we're going to move over to our Vitamin Magic segment with Michael so listen up, take notes, because he's always got some excellent information about yes, vitamins. Does. Sure does. Be back in a moment. Hi, it's Michael, and welcome to another Vitamin Magic Carpet Ride. Today we're talking about the depletions of B1, and then we'll move into the benefits of B2. Now, like all B vitamins, tobacco, stress, fever, coffee, alcohol, surgery, and raw clams. All of those will work to deplete not only the B vitamins, but specifically B1. Now, as far as B2 goes, it has some wonderful benefits, and we'll talk about those because it's important in the metabolism of fats, carbohydrates, proteins. As you can see, the Bs are involved in digestive processes. It's interesting that doctors recommend patients with cataracts take vitamin B2. And here's a old European approach to ridding the body of cataracts. And I know it works because I've had elders tell me that it works. You get raw, unfiltered, uncooked honey and drop six, eight, 10 drops into the eyes before you go to bed at night. And the enzymes in the eyes will eat away at the cataracts. And in the morning when you get up, yes, your eyes are going to be sticky, but get some warm water and, you know, wash out the eyes. It will dissolve the honey. And over time, that will remove the cataracts. That should save you a couple grand. Okay. B2 is also essential for the formation of red blood cells. And like A and C and zinc, it's also active in antibody production. Like the other nutrients, it's great for healthy eyes, hair, skin, nails. When I talk about nails, if you have brittle nails, you know, and and take a look if you've got white specks in your nails, we covered that in zinc, that would be a zinc deficiency. I think I may have also mentioned that the brittleness and also the ridges on the nails are a protein malabsorption issue. So more digestive enzymes or more pantothenic acid to help you digest your food better. In uh, deficiencies, inflammation of the mouth, especially cracks at the side of the mouth are a real big indicator of a B2 deficiency, a sore tongue eye problems, like we just mentioned, like cataracts. And again, they're vitamin A and with cataracts, honey, that we just talked about. There are dizziness or poor digestion, skin issues. All of these are tied into a B2 deficiency. Next week, B6. Thanks for listening to The Natural Grocer, and thank you for that Vitamin Magic segment with Michael. Today's show was featuring our very special guest, Dr. George Love, Qigong Master and Doctor of Oriental Medicine, Acupuncturist, and Herbalist. Thank you, Dr. Love. We appreciate you. <laughs> Through Qigong and other healing insights, Dr. Love works with his patients to help them reduce emotional stress that can cause muscular tension and restrict blood flow that can starve the organs, 
of oxygen and lead to pain and sickness. For more, inform- more information regarding Dr. Love and his healing practice, please go to www.lovechinesemedicine.com. His phone number is 561-502-6200. I am Kenyatta Turner with my host, Safir Mahdi. Thanks, Safir. Thank you so much. It's been fun. Yeah, this is a great show. It's fantastic. With Dr. Love, right. Be sure to tune in next week, listeners, when our topic will be Are Oxygen and Ozone Therapies Effective in Treating Diseases? Our very special guest and world famous Mr. Ed McCabe, Dr. or Mr. Oxygen himself, pioneer of oxygen and ozone therapies. Hey, if you missed any part of the show today or if you just want to listen in again, all shows can be heard on demand anytime at our website at naturalgrocerradio.com or on moneyradio1510.com. You can also watch and listen to the show live at Facebook um, and check us out, you know, all, all the interwebs. See you next Saturday and thanks for listening to the Natural Grocer Radio Show. And remember, health is your greatest wealth. Visit AwakeningMusicBooks.com for avant-garde artists, eclectic world music, consciousness raising radio and blogs, self-help healing and wellness services. That's AwakeningMusicBooks.com.